welcome to day two of the trek. I'm leaving the village of Zabeshi, which is behind me, and now I've got a 10 kilometer trek to Abishi. Now, obviously, yesterday's trek was 16k, so this one is much shorter, but you know, that doesn't mean anything if it's all uphill, and well, it's starting that way anyway. It definitely looks like I'm going to get rained on today as I left the guest house. The lovely Georgian babushka looked up and she was like, oh. and what can I do? I have to leave. I have a hotel guest house in, what's it called? Adishi, waiting to fill my belly with another table full of Georgian food. So let's crack on. Problem we've got today is it absolutely hammered it down last night. There was a right storm. So it's gonna make it harder to walk on these little trails because everything's muddy and wet and horrible. So it might take a bit longer than the four hours that I thought it would take. Adisha, 9.3 kilometers, three hours, 55 minutes. Nowhere on the website or the description of today's walk does it say steep. The word steep doesn't come into the description. I would describe this as steep. So I'm hoping, because it's not been described as steep, that it actually doesn't go that far. Bloody hell. It's always the worst. The first part is always the worst. It appears that today is just one big bloody climb. Just looked at the uh, directions again and it tells me to come up here and then I'll enter a forest and then it says after a two hour climb through the forest Nearly twin on this little bugger. So much for today being an easy day. I've been going about an hour and it's been uphill all the way. And apparently I've still got like another two hours of climbing. I think I prefer to do 16K where 10 of it is flat than do 10K of this. I don't want quite a lot of these tricks, don't I? I don't know what I expect. I got these treks and then like, oh man, it's uphill. Ah. Like as if it's going to be flat the whole way. Whew. Oh, to be back in the city. <laughs> I appear to have lost the blue line on Google Maps. I've not looked at it for a while because I saw the sign to Adishi and I've just basically, as far as I'm aware, just been following that route. I've just looked on Google Maps again and the line's somewhere up there. I appear to be walking up a stream, although there's not much water in it at the minute, it's a bit further down. But there's one thing I'm definitely not doing and that's walking all the way back down here to walk all the way back. Apparently my blue dot is heading in direction of the blue line. So I'm hoping that at some point, the two shall meet. I'm absolutely praying that this trek brings me either back to the blue line or somewhere where I can join it. Because if it doesn't, well, that doesn't bear thinking about because that will add at least two hours onto my journey. Steep hill as well. So an hour going down and an hour coming back. I really do not want that to happen. So it's major fingers crossed time. As you can see, it's pissing it down. Today's not as good as yesterday. Today's a pain in the ass. I've now got to the top of the wrong path and that's now taking me in this direction. The blue line is over here. So I have no choice now. I've got to basically leave this and hopefully see if I can get over here. And it's not too big a drop, it's not too dangerous. There does seem to be some kind of path here. 
So this is it. This is where I find out whether I'm screwed or not. This really is a pain in the ass. So I climbed up to the top and there's just a big bloody drop down here. I'm literally, according to Google Maps, I'm like a metre away from the path, but I'm about 15 metres above it. I've just had to force my way through this lot and I've just basically, I ain't got a choice. I've just got to keep going down and hope that it reaches me to the bottom at some point. I mean, this is definitely not a path. Freak's sake. This is an absolute nightmare. I've literally found where it starts going down hill. I'm having to force myself through very dense, thick forest. I'm literally just pushing my way through. And every time I stop to look at my phone, I'm still not going in the right direction. I'm absolutely soaked now. My feet are soaked, my socks are soaked. Every single part of me is soaked. And yeah, it's an absolute nightmare. I'm getting slapped in the face by branches every two minutes, nearly slipping down and falling. Oh dear. Today is an absolute effing nightmare. So I obviously missed a turn and came up here instead. And, but it was heading in the same direction. I th and I got to the point where I didn't want to turn back. So I kept on going and then eventually it started going off in a different direction. So I tried to cross over. And as you've just seen, I literally spent 20 minutes trying to fight my way through this dense, thick forest only to come out here where I started. So now there is the worst thing, the one thing I didn't want to happen. I'm going to have to walk all the way back down here to find the turn and then walk all the way back up. So I basically lost easily an hour and a half. I'm heading back towards where I started. And it's absolutely pissing it down. I'm soaked, my feet are soaked because I've had to fight my way through the bloody bushes. Oh man, this is so different to yesterday. <laughs> Bloody hell. Two hours into this trail, an hour walk uphill, only to have to come back down. I can see the hostel, I, I can see the hostel again. I know what's gone wrong. And it wasn't bloody me. I mean, if fair enough, if I'd have kept looking my eye on the blue line, then, you know, this wouldn't have happened. But it's impossible to do so because it's pissing it down. So as soon as I open my phone up, the rain hits the screen and it all starts doing weird things. So I got over there. Remember the sign pointing up there to Adesha? That's where it balls up because that sign to Adesha should be pointing this way. I've just met some more trekkers on their way up there as I was coming back down. And I said, are you going to Adesha? And they said, yeah. I said, it's not this way. And they're like, but the sign says this way. And I said, I know, I know, but trust me, it's not. I've just been up and down. It's took me an hour. I've fallen down twice. I'm bleeding. I'm wet. It's up to you, but, you know, there is a chance that I may be wrong. And anyway, they've continued. And now I know I'm on the right track. At least I think I am. I kind of want to go up there and shout them and say, you're going the wrong way. But... I already gave them that warning and they chose to ignore it. So now, an hour after beginning my two hour trek uphill, I've got a two hour trek uphill. Oh God. Do you know what though? I feel alive after all that. Bloody hell, fighting the bloody forest and slipping down and falling off rocks. What a time to be alive. I do feel sorry for the guys that were starting going up the uh, trek that I went up that is wrong. I did tell them, but you know, they must have just thought maybe I got it wrong. So, but the thing is, they haven't got uh, the map that I've got, the um, Caucus Travel website, what puts the blue line on Google Maps or Maps Me. They are literally just following the markers. So what's going to happen with them is they're going to do the same as what I did. They're going to carry on walking up, realising that they're going the wrong way. In fact, they might even realise it much further than I did because I actually looked at my map and realised that my blue dot was quite a far distance from the blue line. They're not going to have that blue line, so they're not going to know. I guess at some point they're going to realise they've not seen any markers. 
but at what point do you decide to start going back? They've got it tough, man. And the thing is, when they do decide, when they realise they're not getting where they want to be, if they head back all that way, back to the marker, they're going to see it pointing in the way they've just come from. So they're not going to have a clue. I did try and shout them when I walked. I tried to shout them and say, you're going the wrong way, but obviously they didn't hear me and I wasn't going climbing back up again, following them. What the hell? I've already lost two hours of the day. And yeah, this is just uphill all the way. So, I mean, the views are nice, but it's basically, that's it. That's the whole view I've had it all day. I can't understand. The website doesn't mention anything about the difficulty of today's trek. I'm sure later on in the page, it gives you an option saying that because today's trek has been fairly easy, you can do this as an extension. It's uphill all the frigging way. And obviously I've had the bonus of walking up a hill for an hour for absolutely no reason and having to come back down and starting again. But, oh bloody hell. Every now and again you get parts that aren't too bad. But, yeah. Slowly does it. The girl of the group that I told were heading in the wrong direction and they didn't listen. You should have seen the backpack she had on. It was almost the size of her came right up above her head. Yeah, she's carrying a lot of stuff. So they're gonna have a tough day ahead of them. Should have listened to Global Treats. He knows what he's talking about. Eventually. You know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna finally get to my hostel and they're already gonna be there. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. Hey, flat bit. And just when I start getting slightly drier it pisses it down again oh big wet rock to sit on and we made it to our first actual landmark the cable car about halfway on the tracks but this was the first thing to look out for when we made it approximately Two hours later than we should have done. Oh, I hope it starts uh, flattening out from here. Well, because of this stupid bloody weather, I'm guessing that here there would be some great views of another range, but we're not getting much of it because <laughs> of these bloody clouds. You can see here, I'm practically going to be in the cloud in a few seconds. Well, I did it. I did it one and a half times more than I needed to. But I bloody did it. So, after coming out of the forest, thinking that was it for the uh, climbing, I just had another 20 minutes walk up this road. There's a, the, you can see the cable cars, that's a ski resort. And now I've reached a point where I have a choice. Apparently I can do the lower trail or the upper trail. The upper trail goes up another 200 meters elevation, whereas the lower trail starts to head down. I'm going to do the lower trail. I've done far too much up today and it says it offers better views, but it's cloudy as hell anyway. So I'm just going to see better views of clouds. So um, it looks nice down here actually. There's a nice little stream running down and uh, some flowers and stuff. <laughs> and apparently I'm only, I'm less than an hour away from uh, Adishe. In fact, it tells you on here, let's have a look, what's it say? Oh, one hour, 45 minutes. Oh, bloody hell. Okay, well, it is what it is. It's been a long time since I've seen snow. Oh yeah. Got the tadpoles.
Believe it or not, this place is actually on Google Maps. <laughs> Scarpel Hut Cafe. It does say it's uh, temporarily closed. It's actually the nicest part of the walk, this, after all them bloody hours of climbing. It's been a tough one today, but look how beautiful it is. I'm walking through the clouds, walking through the clouds. Oh, it feels so good to, to be going downhill. I'm not even going downhill, just not going uphill. Flat is perfect. Downhill is better. I'm hoping that I don't have to climb any more hills now. We do seem to go right down into the valley. We're still quite high up. I'm absolutely filthy and um, also wet as well. Um, I'm not bothered about being dirty. I just want to get my clothes dry. Look at all the flowers. I'm very confused because the uh, pointer, the marker, said like 1 hour 45 minutes. Google Maps says I'm like 11 minutes away and I've not been walking for an hour and a half. But I also can't see how there's going to be anything around here in 11 minutes time. It's all downhill still, which is nice. Although I think I've actually reached the bottom now, so it might start going back up again. Bloody hell. Also, my um, guest house is not on Google Maps. So I'm hoping it's actually in the town that I'm heading to. Now what's going to happen? Picked a great time to lose my internet connection. I wasn't expecting this. I didn't think I had to do this until tomorrow. Bloody hell. I've lost my internet service. So I can't actually check to see if I'm on the right track, but I've just seen one of these, so I should be okay. Problem is, I don't know where my uh, guest house is. It's a bloody challenge today. Look at this. Pretty soon I won't be able to bloody see. Google Maps was completely wrong. 11 minutes, my arse. Still got a way to go, I reckon maybe 45 minutes from here. And then I've got to find my actual hostel. Because my guest house isn't on Google Maps, I've just had a look on booking.com and looked on the map there. And right next to my guest house, there's another guest house, which is on Google Maps. So I've looked where it is and these directions are taking me straight to it. So I don't have to worry about not being able to find the guest house once I get there. And according to Google Maps, it's 2.1 kilometers away, which is about, I don't know, what's that going to be? About half an hour walk, maybe, through this. It sounds about right. Whew, coming to the end now. Pissing it down again. I don't think today would have been half as frustrating if it weren't for this goddamn weather. I mean, it is predicted, like, for the whole time that I'm here, but it's never really happened. But today, I mean, here we go, it's absolutely belting it down now. God damn it, it's always just before I get to my hostel. I hope they've got somewhere to dry my clothes. Now what do I bloody do? Jesus. I'm basically screwed here, aren't I? Didn't say anything about this. Tomorrow, I have to pass a river. I have to cross a river. And I'm expecting this tomorrow. I'm not expecting it today. There's no way across. And that water is going to be absolutely freezing as well. Right, the shoes, put the other side. This is going to be very cold. Whoa! <laughs> Good start!
It actually feels quite nice. <laughs> Cold. As soon as you lift one foot up, it's going to take you away. Good luck. Oh man, I wasn't expecting that. Well, on a trek that has seen me climb the wrong hill for an hour, has ended with me falling in a bloody river. <laughs> for the day. I hope they've got somewhere to uh, dry my clothes because I don't fancy putting these back on tomorrow. I just got chatting to a guy as we were uh, both attempting to cross the river and uh, he did a much better job than I did. I just fell straight in. Uh, I'm not sure if I got that on camera or not. I think I probably did. And, uh, and yeah, so we were chatting for a while after we crossed and he's like uh, camping out here and after a couple of minutes he said anyway it was nice to meet you uh what's your name we shook hands and then he said right i'm gonna just go at my own pace and yeah he's already gone <laughs> he doesn't want to work for an old git like me can't blame him well i'm guessing we're coming up to the town now because we have all these signs Pointing to various guest house, a bar restaurant, nice place. It's supposed to be nice in there. And um, yeah, fast food, um, fast food, and market. Do you know? Oh, God, a Coke Zero. Oh, my word. Bloody hell. It reminds me a little bit of Nong Kiao in Laos with the mountains and all the kind of homemade signs pointing you to various guest houses and and shops and bars the only difference is Nong Kiao was bloody lovely weather and here it's wet and horrible but we're nearly there now we're on the last stretch where is this bloody village? I thought I was like reaching it about half an hour ago and I still can't see it I can see a nice waterfall down there. What the hell? There's a building down there. Might even be like a bar, they've got a table outside. What the hell? <laughs> Imagine that. What a place to go for a beer. Imagine meeting your mates. Oh, do you fancy going for a drink? Yeah, where are you going? Oh, that bar in uh, Adisha. Uh, okay, what time do you want to meet? Uh, in about four months. I'm presuming that I will see something when I get up around this corner because I shouldn't really be far away now. Oh, hang on. Oh, beautiful. Oh, look at this. Wow. Just wait until this comes into view. Oh, what about that? My word. And believe it or not, I've now actually been trekking for six bloody hours and this is the first village I've come across. They're not going to have any Coke Zero here, are they? What the hell? How do they get anything in and out of here? Well, after this challenging day, at least the uh, last little bit is nice and easy to walk up. The road to Hadisha. Wow, look at this. Oh, that's not my hostel. <laughs> All right then. The village of Hadisha. Let's take a look. Is this the most remote place I've been? Certainly on this trip, I think. Look 
look at it. Wow. It's hard to imagine that people live here. Well, let me take you on the guided tour of Adishi. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ooh, Nino and Tarzan. That's me. That's where I'm staying. He says it has Wi-Fi, which is good because there's no data signal down here. Is this Nino and Tarzan? Bloody hell, just look at this place. Uh, Nino and Tarzan? Ah, uh, brilliant. Um, so, room? Uh, yeah, okay. This looks uh, new. That's me. Brilliant. So, this is my room then. And like most of these, uh, well, I say most of them if you need to. Um, yeah, there's no heating in the room. Um, but there are plenty of uh, other blankets there. I'm not sure what that is. Anyway, it all seems very new. It looks like it's only just been done. It's all got doors that have not been put on yet. There's a few rooms. We've got a couple of people here. There's a couple more people coming. So it's not just me, which is good. It smells nice. I have to watch it now. It's very slippery. And unfortunately, this is the only place where I could actually hang my clothes, but they're probably just going to get wet. But look at this, oh the cows are coming over. They've been stood over here for quite a while deciding whether to come or not and now here they are. Oh, there's a kid there though, is he going to let him go? Yes he is. These are my clothes, they're absolutely soaked and God knows how they're going to get dry by tomorrow. Doesn't look like it's going to get sunny anytime soon. But what a little village. Look at this place. <laughs> right then, so it's the third day. Right, so I just thought I'd just come and have a look around the town before I disappear. That should take all of 30 seconds. can hear something grunting. In 2014, the population of this village was 44. I can't see that it's uh, gone up any in the last eight years. Right, so I'm going to end the day two vlog here. And in day three, I'm going to head to Iprari, which is 17.4 kilometers away. Six hour trek today. So I'll see you in part three.